Adelina, thanks yeah. for helping with my project. Of course. Uh, did you know that NASA's planning to send astronauts back to the moon again for the first time since 1972? Yes, and I think that's actually very exciting because um, I wanted to be an astronaut when like, I was you know, very small and then um, growing up in Russia, it was a big thing. And then coming back here and then visiting NASA and things like that, I actually found it very exciting because... I feel like we don't know everything we could about the moon and there's way more to learn and everybody's talking about exploring Mars and things, but moon is way closer and we still haven't learned everything we could, even about the other side of the moon. And um, I'm actually studying chemical engineering and I'm planning to work for uh, fuel efficiency for rocket ships once I graduate. So I think going back to the moon and then exploring it a little bit more and maybe even having a colony or something on there, which I know sounds crazy, but um, it would allow us to learn more about the situational aspect of it. And then maybe once, you know, we develop the fuel efficiency and develop some rocket ships to go to Mars, it would all come back together and we'll be able to actually be more prepared, not over prepared because there's no such thing, but more prepared and um, at least have an idea of what it would feel like because moon or Mars, we're still going to have to live in similar conditions. But on the moon, if we can send back for them on the Mars, that wouldn't be an option. So I found it very exciting. And also we could learn more even about, um, you know, just how it's changing over the years. Because obviously we know what it's made of and we ha have all the compositions of it. And as a chemist, I find it really interesting. But then it's changing over the years and since we haven't been there, we don't know if it changed at all or how much it has changed. So, um, yeah, we talked a little bit about it, but then I don't, I'm not allowed to go on rants. So <laughs> we go back to <laughs> topics on our lectures. Well, you um, should come to our space meeting tomorrow. We have the North Houston Space Society. We meet once a month. Tomorrow? To, yeah, it's every, it's the second Saturday of every month. And where is it at? Uh, well, tomorrow's going to be at Spring Creek Barbecue on 249, but okay. then next month it'll be at the Barbara Bush uh, Library. Okay, yeah. I probably can't make it tomorrow, but I'd love to go next month. Okay. And if Shannon can send me all the information. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, cool. <I> <laughs> okay, amazing. Um, if it was safe and affordable, would you take a trip to space? Yes, obviously. Like, anytime. If somebody comes and they're like, Oh, do you want to drop out of the university for a year and go to space? Yes. yes. If they make me up in the middle of the night, do you want to go to space? Yes. <laughs> so, anytime. Um, in 200 years, how far do you think humanity could get in terms of space? And... Okay, so I was thinking about it, I actually think about it a lot because if you go uh, even 100 years back in 1922, yeah. we didn't even have an idea that we would be in space. It was unthinkable. And now it's like, Oh yeah, you know, Saturday's a space day, and or now Tuesday because of Elon Musk, but it's just crazy to me that we can't really comprehend how far the technology can come, and it's not accelerating at a linear rate, it's accelerating at, I feel like even faster than an exponential rate, because it took us so long to even get to where we were in 1922, and then now in 2022, we're way more ahead than we were so I feel like what it took us maybe 300 years before now it can take us three years and so I don't know exactly where we'll be but I think we'll be everywhere <laughs> in space at least um, probably on Mars for sure um, and I was talking with Shannon about this today um, since my sister's going to Arizona when we come visit her, um, I really want to go to Biosphere 2, yes. which is a museum now. And thankfully, they didn't have to, like, you know, uh, demolish it because of some issues that they were having. But um, I feel like they are going to do another one, maybe like Biosphere 3 or whatever they call it. And it's very possible, especially with our technology, because a lot of the failings were due to, you know, obviously, like, the tension between people and the lack of oxygen and food supply because people were getting lazy and not, like decomposing their food and doing all the proper steps. But if we, you know, incorporate an AI and then build another one and have it on a larger scale where there is a, like a feeling of a society, like there would be in like a small town, then it'd be more possible. And I don't know, it's just like very exciting to think about. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. And it's kind of interesting with Biosphere. 
uh, too. They had like all this technology for like the air and the water. Yeah. But then they had the humans do everything else. It's yeah, like why like, why not automate like the food production? Yeah, and, and they thought of everything. They saw, thought, oh, the animals are probably gonna die, so let's put more. Oh, we need like this biome to develop, so we're gonna like put different species depending on which way it develops. And then they just didn't think of the human aspect of it that they're gonna start stealing food and have tensions and it's just so stupid because they just threw it away and yeah. they, could, they could have you know made something bigger which it still remains like one of the largest if not the largest like biomes and experiments like that but i feel like they could have taken it farther which now we have the ability to so yeah it's really exciting to think about <laughs> it is um it, you talked about the human element. And so like Apollo 8, whenever they first went around the moon for the first time, yeah. they saw uh, Earth as like a sphere and it like was really shocking to them. Um, people that go to Mars, they'll see something never seen before and that's <laughs> the Earth actually disappear. What do you think that would be like to see the Earth disappear? I think it would be eye-opening because we think, you know, a lot of people even nowadays don't realize how far the moon is from the earth they're mm. like oh yeah the moon like we can see it from here but the scale of it and like how much actually goes into it, they're like oh yeah people go to the moon and like we've been there but it's not like driving to another state obviously mm -hmm. and um i think our brain can't really comprehend the scale of it and we're like yeah the universe is infinite but we don't really understand it it's like oh yeah billions of light years away but people don't know the difference between million and billion you right know? Um, so I think it would definitely be just like unimaginable and you have to be there and experience it and see how far away it actually is. And you're like, oh, we really don't matter in the scale of the universe. I know. So, um, it's kind of just like crazy to think about because I know I can't imagine it and like anybody who can, I think they're lying, but <laughs> I know yeah. what you mean. Yeah. So. I really appreciate your time and <laughs> I'd love to talk to you more sometime. Thank you. Actually. I'll try to make it to that meeting for yeah. sure. All right, just come over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank okay. you. You guys well, are always welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you.